there's a lot of things that you can only access through Jesus. Your personal identity is one of them. The deep sense of value that is upon your life is another. Thirdly, it is a sense of your personal destiny. The works that God has prearranged for you to walk in, a path that he's longing to set before you. This is in Ephesians 2.10. It says we are his workmanship. We are his master work. We are a work of art created in Christ Jesus, transformed, reborn from above. For good works, it says, good works that God has pre prearranged before time. Good plans for you to walk in. That's why David said, lead me in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. It wasn't what I wanted to do. It's your will be done, even as Jesus spoke. So your entire life is prearranged. Who you are, what you're worth, what you are destined to do, the works that were destined for you, it is an absolute cooperation between you and heaven. If you, if you so choose to allow it, it's the good life, it says in Ephesians 2.10. The good life that God has for you only comes through consent, just like a marriage relationship. It's consensual. God's not going to force good plans on you. He's not going to force you to receive his love for you, his power, his transformative power. See, those plans that are for you, see, the implication is you must become who he created you to be first. Only in becoming who you are to him are you ever going to see why you were created by him and for him. See, those good plans and that path, I believe, unfolds as you embrace willingly and excitedly the fullness of who you are to God, the fullness of who Jesus suffered for you to become. It's awesome. It's a prearranged good plan, a prearranged good life, a life of freedom a life of happiness, a life of peace, a life of pleasure. Pleasure in the sense that knowing that God himself is pleased with you, you are pleased. You're pleased to know you're validated. You're pleased to know your worth. Pleased to know your purpose on earth through your God-given identity. That's why there's nothing like it nothing like it in any other religion because the only way into this prearranged plan for you this identity this destiny this sense of your own purpose that God is fulfilling through you is through Jesus himself the work of Christ the finished work the grace of Christ is the power the implication here is the work of Jesus is what's empowering it. That's why I say I'm powered by grace. I'm powered by a life that is content just to receive from the wellspring of what Jesus has accomplished. I'm receiving my identity. I'm receiving divine revelations of who I am to God. Therefore, who I am, period. I don't even have the authority to decide who I am, but what I have discovered, everything he says about me is good. And when I believe it, it's true. I see manifestations as, my, as your spirit is aligned with your soul and your soul is aligned with heaven. 
It's so powerful to see what transpires as a life of good works, a life of fruitfulness, a life of significance. See, God's going to give you rewards based on things that he accomplished through you, which is crazy. God's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. The good and faithful servant will be the person who actually cooperated with what heaven already prearranged, planned in advance for you to do and walk in. It's actually just a testament of grace that God would give you rewards in heaven bless you, transform you, wash you up, bring you into the truest sense of who you are as a child of God, and through you accomplish what he already prearranged, and it's according to your own personal level of desire, of talents, of interest, everything you're naturally inclined to want to do, he's going to do an amazing work as you allow him it says the master worker and i see the 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 imagery of he is the potter you are the clay he's wanting to mold you and shape you into this vessel of honor a vessel of significance a vessel of fulfillment the question is will you agree with heaven Will you agree with the plan that is on your life? The blueprint that God is calling you to accomplish by his grace. It's an allowing of grace to do a perfect work in you, whereby you're empowered not just to receive an identity, but to accomplish a destiny. That's why the Bible says, Paul said, in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, um, by the grace of God, I am who I am. And the grace that was given to me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than the rest. But it wasn't I, but the grace of God who is in me. So this life is rooted in an understanding that grace is a power that transforms to the very image of God and it is the same power that brings forth the fruitfulness of a plan for your life that was prearranged. It's an awesome plan. It's everything your heart desires and more. A, a plan of good relationships, good health. It's difficult because there is a severing from the old things. Even the identity that you used to carry on your on your true identity, that must go. There is no place for a lie about who you are. You have to shed that layer of a bad identity, of a wrong identity, of an erroneous identity. You must shed the layers of relationships that are not the fruit of a soul that was soundly saved. When your soul was lost, it was clean for a sense of purpose, sense of identity, sense of affirmation. There's got to be a willingness to let go of, of what was never authorized to produce life in you. That death of letting go is, is the cost. You know, there is a cost, but put it this way, it's only going to cost you the things that were killing you. It's only going to cost you the things that were not producing life in you. It's only going to cost you the lie, the willingness to walk away from a life that was essentially wholly a lie. What kind of cost is that really? It's going to cost you more, my friend, to continue to live in what's killing you, continue to live in a lie. That's what's really costing you. So the cost of God is no cost at all. It's just a willingness to walk away from what never was the best for you into what is the truth and the best, a life beyond imagination. Will you allow it? It's all been prearranged. It's a cooperation with heaven. It's already been decided. Will I live with my 
attention on heaven, fixed in focus, and do that as a lifestyle whereby this plan can be laid out. It takes consistency, it takes a decision, and it takes a surrender, 100%. Powered by grace, we love you. God bless.